Good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world, guys. It is our trades back here with another video. I want to thank you for joining me, guys. If you want to support this channel, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and use the affiliate links in the description box below. In this video, I'm going to talk about two critical topics which ought to change your mindset in day trading and should dramatically improve your results. As always, guys, these are only my opinions, and none of this constitutes financial advice. In this video, I want to talk about the number one objective in day trading, and I want to talk about something called the risk of ruin. This is a concept that was introduced by Nassim Nicholas Taleb in his book, uh, The Black Swan, and it's something that you need to understand on a deep level, in my opinion, in order to succeed long term at day trading. Guys, take it from someone who has blown through more money and more accounts than I will ever care to admit. But the number one goal in day trading is not to make money, as odd as that sounds. It is to preserve what you have. Now, I know that those of you out there are thinking very simply, well, if I want to preserve what I have, I just won't trade at all. That's not what I mean. Guys, what I mean is that you need to focus on the process. You need to focus on the process. You need to focus on becoming better at the skill and getting into good habits rather than focusing on the returns that you're going to make in a day. Because what's going to happen is when you're over leveraged, when you're using too much size, you are going to take a loss and then you're going to chase those losses and then your losses are going to get larger. They're going to get larger uh, a lot faster than you think. And these markets move, uh, they can move seemingly randomly, they can move quickly, and they can move without remorse. And so guys, this ties in with the second concept of you need to minimize your risk of ruin. So what do I mean by that? You have to minimize the percentage chance that your account goes to zero that you bust your account in order to be successful in the long term, which is called minimizing your risk of ruin. All right, because every time that you take a trade and over the long term, you have a theoretical possibility of returning an unlimited amount of profits, but that is limited ultimately by the risk that you blow your account. In other words, your risk of ruin. And so for many of you, and take this from someone with the firsthand experience to know this, for many of you, you are uh, frankly doing the same thing which I do, which is over leveraging. Okay, what do I mean by over leveraging? Guys, whatever size you are currently trading, the correct size is almost certainly smaller. Okay, and the reason for that is, is that you have to remove as much as possible that risk of ruin or the percentage chance that you are going to go to zero dollars. And that way, from a mathematical standpoint, given a long enough period of time, you have a theoretical possibility of returning an unlimited profit uh, and then as low as you can make it in terms of going to zero. And so that's how you play this game in the long term. Another way of saying this, guys, is the number one objective of day trading. If you are going to day trade, so let's take the let's take the hypothetical out here that you're not going to trade. In other words, obviously, guys, you have no risk of ruin if you simply don't trade. I'm assuming here because this is a trading channel that you're here because you, in fact, want to trade. What I'm telling you is that when you are going to trade, your number one objective is not, in fact, to make money. It is, in fact, to preserve what you have. Every time that you put on a trade, you'd be surprised how quickly these markets can move, even on one contract. And your size needs to be smaller even than what you think it should be. And so if you have a small account, guys, it should really be one micro ES, one micro Russell, one micro crude oil. It should be a small number, a small amount. And that way you're minimizing your risk of ruin and you are focusing on preserving your capital. Whenever you put your capital at risk, the number one rule in order to day trade responsibly and to day trade for a long period of time to make sure that 
you have the money that you need to actually trade because this this uh, this hobby this this task this thing that you want to do it requires capital you have to have money in order to trade whether you're trading on a prop firm or whether you're trading on your own cash either way it's going to it's going to cost you money it's going to take money to do that and so your objective is not to make money it is in fact to preserve what you have so I know that for those of you with five hundred six hundred thousand dollars two thousand dollars it's it's like painfully slow when you trade one micro contract and you're trading really small size it can be painful putting in a stop loss and trying to make 30 30 40 bucks at a time but guys if you actually look at the hourly rate of making forty dollars in 10 minutes 15 minutes 20 minutes the hourly rate is actually really good compared to most jobs um, and so it's just a little bit of illusion when you're trading that small size the point being, guys, is that in order to trade successfully, number one, you need to minimize your risk of ruin. You need to minimize the chance that you are actually going to go to zero, that your account will go to zero. Because assuming that you could not just put more money in your account, which of course you can put more money in your account. I'm not pretending like you can't do that. But if we assumed in a vacuum from a mathematical standpoint, if we were to assume that you could not put more money in your account, that you started with a fixed amount, the absolute worst thing that could happen to you is to go to zero because you can take no more trades. You can put no more risk on. You have a 0% chance of returning a profit if you don't take risk. And the only way in a, in a, from a mathematical standpoint that you can't take on risk to, to bring in a return is if you are at zero or you, be, you are below the threshold by which you can put on a trade. Okay? And so with that being said, your upside potential these are called asymmetric returns this is something that Nick the same Nicholas Taleb talks about the way to succeed in the markets is to look at it strictly speaking which is you want to minimize your risk of ruin and maximize your risk of return over time and you want to go for what's called asymmetric returns what are asymmetric returns well asymmetric returns are very simple if you look at the US stock futures like the MES over any given period of time the majority of time of the time they are really not moving all that much at all uh, in terms of like the the period of time in which they're moving but they move in largely in these bursts as as in here and as in when we move higher guys the market tends to move in these bursts although recently we've been grinding higher and there are some exceptions to that the market tends to move in these bursts so you have to minimize your risk while maximizing your potential of return. And the way that you do that is by trading a very small size to where really no one trade could ever, no one trade or even many trades could bust your account, uh, but you have an unlimited return. Also, guys, I want to talk about chance and I want to talk about variance. So what, what is chance and what is variance? This is going to be the next chapter in this video. Guys, chance and variance. So this is a concept that you'll find in gambling or in poker in general. Uh, this is something that you're going to find in poker, you're going to find in gambling, but really it's not, um, it's not something that is restricted only to, only to poker. Okay, guys, so this is, uh, this is a coin poker, 20 samples and confidence intervals. This is the expected value if you're to make two and a half big blinds over 100 hands. And as you can see, guys, there is a tremendous, even when you are a profitable poker player, there is a tremendous amount of variance. And you could even run uh, 90,000 hands with a, and overall be profitable and still run a loss. Guys, it is the exact same way in day trading as it is with playing poker. There is a variance to it where you could just lose a series of trades in a row. In fact, you could lose 10 trades in a row, but overall, you could still be a profitable trader. But because you are experiencing variance in the, experiencing variance in the same way that a poker player will, you might lose for a long period of time. Guys, much in the same way that poker is a game of skill that incorporates chance, trading is a game of skill 
that incorporates chance. And so, for example, if overall, let's say over 100,000 trades, over 100,000 trades in the same way over 100,000 hands, if overall you are profitable trading, given the law of large numbers, you will in fact show a profit in the same way that a poker player uh, over, over a large enough sample size will in fact show a profit. But there are going to be periods of time in which your win rate is going to be pretty low and that you're going to experience variance. Now, the issue is not that you're going to experience variance because all of you are going to experience variance. You're going to have multiple trades in a row uh, that fail. You're going to lose a lot of trades in a row. This is mathematically inevitable to happen. It's not something where I can look at you and, and tell you, oh, it might happen. No, I'm telling you that it will happen. You will experience variance, period. Even if you are overall a profitable day trader, you will, in fact, experience variance. Okay, given, given 100, 200,000 trades, you will experience variance. You will have downswings. That's just mathematically a fact. You are, you're also going to sometimes run into where you're running very positive variance. But you have to, like a poker player, you have to keep your long-term averages in mind. Now, remember that when you are day trading, so this is now going to go into the topic of how you start every day trade at a loss and how overall, even though you don't have to win a majority of your trades, you overall have to show about a you know 51% give or take return because you have to overcome the commission and the spread. On every single trade, even when you're trading futures, there's a commission that you pay and there's a spread that you pay. Uh, even if that spread is very small, you're, you're still paying maybe a tick to two ticks in spread. And then in addition to that, you're trading a commission. So what does that mean? Mathematically, you are in fact starting every single trade at a loss every single trade at a loss, even if there is at any given moment a 50% chance that the market will go up and a 50% chance that the market will go down, you are always starting a trade at a loss. And it's very similar to how when you're playing poker and there are antes, uh, antes or blinds, you are in fact, uh, let's say you're in the big blind position, every time that you are in the big blind position, because you are putting out a one big blind, big blind bet, that's why you have overall, given 100, 200,000 hands, given a large enough sample size, all poker players will show a loss in the big blind, no matter how skilled they are, because you're losing a big blind every single hand. And so, guys, you can make money trading, but you have to realize that, number one, you have to trade smaller because you have to minimize your risk of ruin. Number two, you have to understand what I showed you here before mathematically, which is variance. You don't feel bad if you lose 10 trades in a row. That doesn't necessarily mean that given enough trades, you are an unprofitable trader. What that means is that you have to take enough trades to get a large enough sample size to see whether you are in fact a profitable trader or a, or a not profitable trader. And then number three, you need to realize that, okay, given a vacuum, it's pretty easy to trade. But in fact, because you were trading live markets, you pay commission and you pay spread. So you were starting every trade at a small loss. Every single trade, you're starting at a loss. And so really, your trades have to be not just 51% profitable. You know, they have to be 53% profitable. They have to be slightly more profitable than not profitable. Every single trade you take, given a large enough sample size in the aggregate. So what do you do with this information? The ultimate conclusion is if you over leverage if you trade too many contracts and if you dollar cost average, if you are adding on contracts and doubling your risk, which is something that I have lost way more money than I'm willing to admit, if you put on too much risk, meaning that instead of trading the one micro contract that you should be trading, the minimum size, you're trading two, three, four, five or more. You are over leveraging, meaning that you're trading five to 10% of your account per trade, whatever. If you are over leveraging, if you're trading too much size, you are guaranteed to lose. You are guaranteed to lose no matter how profitable of a trader you are because assuming that you continue to trade, at some point you're going to experience variance no matter how skilled of a trader you are. In this. So again, to show you the variance calculator for poker, um, even, even if I were to change this win rate, you would still see a, a, uh, a, large, a large variance. This is two and a half big blinds. Let's show you even if I made, even if you on average made five big blinds, notice that there is still at a five big blind win rate, which guys, if you play at five big blind win rate, 
let me show you this on poker, the poker variance calculator. That's a five big blind win rate. Look at how often you are still running into significant downswings. So guys, if you over leverage, you are, if you trade too much size, if you trade too much size, you are mathematically guaranteed to lose. That's it. You are mathematically guaranteed to lose. You, in fact, given enough time, you will lose. You are paying commissions and you're paying spread on every single trade you take. And no matter how lucky you are, if you continue to press the button, you are going to lose. The only manner in which you can trade successfully over time, and this is something that I have to tell myself all the time, is you have to be a good at day trading, but you have to minimize your risk of ruin and you have to trade really small size. And that way you can withstand the downswings, you can withstand the downtimes, uh, you can withstand the times where you're experiencing negative variance and you're not blowing your account. As long as you have the ability to trade, and meaning as long as you have enough equity to put a trade on such that you can have an unlimited profit but a limited risk, meaning you have a 0% chance risk of ruin, a 0% chance risk of ruin. The trade is not going to blow you out, right? That's a 0% chance risk of ruin. And you have a 100% unlimited profit given a, given a long enough period of time and given a large enough sample size. And assuming that you are, in fact, a break-even or profitable trader, or really you have to be a profitable trader to overcome commissions and spread, you are going to make money. And so that's it. That's the purpose of this video is the number one rule in day trading, and, to, and I correlated it with poker. The number one rule in day trading is to preserve your capital. It is to preserve your capital. You must minimize your risk of ruin while maximizing your potential of return, and you must trade the right size or you're guaranteed to lose because you pay commissions and spread in the same way and you experience variance in the same way that you do in poker, which is what I showed you on the online poker variance calculator. All right, guys. So in this video, I covered a topic of risk of ruin. I talked about what the number one objective in day trading is, which is not to make money, but to preserve your money and minimize your risk of ruin and to maximize your potential risk of reward. And that's it, guys. I want to thank you for joining me. This has been Our Trades back here with another video. If you'd like to support me, you'd like to support this channel, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and use the affiliate links in the description box below.